I'm Jeannie. And we're the Loose Thread Stitchers. Um, today is January 11th, 2024. And this is floss tube number 23. Um, happy New Year to everyone. Happy stitching so far. And today, well, not today, but this month is our two year floss anniversary. <laughs> Jeannie informed me. He's practicing saying that. <laughs> yeah, I did because I thought, how am I going to say flossiversary? <laughs> but I did it twice though. So. Yeah, we made our first one on January 19th, 2022. Yeah, that's interesting. I, time flies when you're having fun, right? Right. Um, so updates. Made it through Christmas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it went by so fast again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't had a lot of snow. Actually, I just told Jeannie this morning when I got to her house, we don't live, what, 40 minutes away, mm -hmm. 45 minutes away. I have a lot less snow than she does. I've hardly had any. And Monday we went to Grumpy Minnows for lunch, and it was really snowing when we left there. I mean, it was coming down. And by about halfway home, she went to club and I went home, and there was no snow. It didn't snow at my house that day at all. Oh I mean, wow! I still have. I still see my deck now. Today it snowed a little bit at our house last night, so I did do some snow stitching, but uh, snow day stitching. But I still can see my deck. So my deck, hmm. the floor of the deck, you can still see through the little bit of snow. But Jeannie has quite a bit more snow here. Yeah, and when I came home from club on Monday, the plows were out. The roads I was going, the back roads. Oh, so. isn't that funny? So it must have. It seems like it's either north or really south. And it seems like, I don't know, I must be in that middle part where it kind of, yeah. it does, you know, like the rain did. We were waiting for rain all summer. Well, it, it seems like the snow is doing the same thing because I don't, I mean, Tom hasn't had to even shovel. He hasn't oh. had to blow snow. He hasn't had to do yeah. anything. Because I came home from lunch and I said, did it snow here? And he goes, no. <laughs> I went, oh, okay. I said, I was at lunch and it was really coming down. And, and it was really pretty because we had it sat at a resort and we're overlooking a lake, which isn't frozen. No, it's not frozen. But it was a winter, winter scene. Yeah, it was. It was really pretty because we sat by the window and it was really pretty. And then I was driving thinking, okay, it's going to be slippery because I'm on a lot of, going home, I'm on a lot of windy two-lane roads and... I didn't have any trouble mm. at all. It stopped. It was yeah. like, okay, that was fun. <laughs> and club took a while longer being the first of the year, so I'm I'm look trying to look out through the curtains you know, <laughs> to see how it's... But it had stopped, I think, by the time we got done with club. Yeah, that was interesting. So um, other than that, I'm, I'm always kind of happy when Christmas is done. It's a lot of work, and it's... 
Jeannie smiles because she probably had Christmas <laughs> up all year. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. Um, so I, I took it down Christmas Day. I mean, it only takes me like a half hour to get it down. So it's not. Yeah. We were in Florida the week before Christmas for our oldest son. And then um, came home on Christmas Eve. And the younger son and his family had dinner waiting for us. And, and that was a rain. We got like, what, almost three inches of rain that weekend. Yeah, it rained. It, we haven't had, like I say, much snow. So. And we had Christmas Eve, and then there's 13 of us, and then Christmas Day. Tom and I usually go to a movie. There really wasn't a movie we wanted to see, so I stayed home. It was nice. What would you do on Christmas Eve that there were 13 of you? We went to Brian's house, my son's house. New Or Christmas Eve, right, okay, yeah. yep. Not New Year's Eve. No, Christmas no. Eve, that's right, yeah. No. Yeah, next year it's your turn. Yeah, it's my turn, so it'll be even. Yeah. I'll have to start earlier, and I will have to decorate next year. I'll have to put up more than I normally do. More than just the sewing room. Yeah, yeah. The sewing room looks so festive. I'll have to put some Christmas stuff up in the living room and stuff where everybody will be, but it'll be okay. Yeah. I got a year to think about it. <laughs> it'll yeah. be just fine. So, um,. We had a couple of questions, and we're going to answer one now, and the other one I'll answer during Turtle Tidbits. Um, Teresa asked Jeannie the trees she showed last time that she had cross-stitched if they were put on a chopstick. So, No, they're, I think they're photo or place card holders, um, and they're tree trunks. Helen D., I got this idea from Helen D. when she did her tree finishes. And it, um, yeah, you get, oh, I think it's like two dozen. But uh, that's what they are. That's what she put her tree on. Yeah. Yep. So, it, it, uh, I think we answered all our other comments, but this one we just noticed a couple days ago, so we thought we'd address it here. Right. And there was another question from Teresa about my turtles, and I'll answer that when we get to turtle tidbits. <laughs> Um, so we'll go on to FFOs, and I, I have, this is kind of my FFO, my, my it's a start, it's a finish, <laughs> it's an FFO. Um, I got a Winter Quaker, and it's, I don't know, I think it's fairly new. She has a, a Valentine one. Yeah, it has 23 on it. Yeah, and so I did it on 40 count um, antique lace. And here's the finish. There it is. I and I had to make the four because in the pattern it's a three. So I just kind of winged it and put 2024. So that's it. And it's um, it's on um, 40 count antique lace. And then I used its sampler threads and it's called distressed linen. I don't know, you probably denim. Denim, sorry. Distressed denim. It calls for battleship. And I and that's from um, Color and Cotton. Battleship to me was a, I have it, it's a little duller. And to me, there wasn't a whole lot of variegation between the darker and the lighter. And I figured since I was doing a one colored thing, I kind of wanted it more so that you could see the variegation a little better. And then I just put, it's half inch, um, I wrote my little note on what my lace was. This is Fiber on a Whim. And this one, this color is called Stream. And it's 3 8 inch rickrack. And I got it at Silver Needle, but I'm sure you could probably, since it's Fiber on a Whim, mm. you would think Fiber on a Whim would be selling it. But I got a lot of colors because I had never seen anybody else but um, Dams of the Needle or... Lady Dot. Lady Dot. I hadn't seen anybody else. So they had a whole bin of these. So I bought a whole bunch of different colors. And this one fit really good. And it is, I don't know if you can see it, but it is variegated. There's some variegation. There's some darker and some lighter in it too. So, and it matched really well. So, and then I just have that on the back. So that's my everything with Christmas and stuff. That's, that's all you're going to get from me for cross stitch. <laughs> I got nothing else, kiddo. <laughs> so... Have at it. <laughs> the only fully finished I have is from the archives. And this, <clears throat> uh, it's, it was a printed cross stitch. And I made this for my mother 
when our old our oldest son was born because he was the second grandchild. My mom my, had my uh, granddaughter who was not quite a year old. So I made this for her. So it'd be a, like 45 years ago. And then um, when she moved out of her home and stuff, we I, I received this back and so I reframed it. So now um, my grandkids yep, well. point to this several times when they come up. <laughs> they do. She tells me all the time the story of, they always point to the picture and tell mom and dad, says, grandma says yes. Yeah, so that's my only fully finished. Okay, do you have a finish? I do. Okay. Well, um, last month I did the countdown to Christmas through Evertote, uh, Modern Folk Embroidery, and Roxy Flasco. I do not have a picture. Um, but what we did is Jacob had the pattern and each day we would get a um, chart. Like this was, you know, the first day. And then on, on the back was the chart for the day and the thread that was received that day. So here are the 25 threads. Wow, that's a lot of threads. Wow. And uh, uh, Ross... Roxy is eight yard skeins. So this is, and I did it on 20 count Turtle Dove Ada from Roxy Flasco. So here is oh, that's pretty. the sampler. I did it one over one. And uh, I kind of stitched ahead because I didn't want to take it to Florida. So, but I did finish it on Christmas. And is that when you were supposed to? Um, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. And then with the kit, we got a small, this chart, small trifle. So it says this small trifle kindly take and keep it for the giver's sake <laughs> but he did chart it too with the alphabet so i'm thinking i could take off the saying if i didn't want or just have the top half i don't know um yeah so that was before christmas and through christmas and then I did a New Year's Day start was, this was also from uh, Evertope. She had this kit, uh, Darling Starlings by Modern Folk Embroidery. And she had kitted it up with a couple Roxy Flosco, but a little bit out of that comfort zone and others comfort zone because she told people I didn't like it and I said it isn't that I don't like it wait till you see the color <laughs> isn't that beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful Jeannie it is <laughs> and this is on 18 count O-O-A-K yeah from Roxy Flasco and then the two color uh, flosses this one is Legend Dairy Mm -hmm. Oh, dairy like milk dairy. Yeah, like it's two. It's a dash legend and then D A I R Y. And this is hussy. <laughs> but this is. I think it's going to be fun. Have it out around you know this time of year, Valentine's Day, and and stuff like that. So <laughs> that when was... she showed me the fabric, I went wow. And then so then she thought so then she's telling people, well, Leo doesn't like it. And I said that. That's not me, but it's like, wow. And if you know Jeannie, <laughs> that's perfect for Jeannie. You know, you see this and you yeah. think, oh, okay, another Christmas or whatever, <laughs> or kind of dull. Or, <laughs> and then when, when uh, Caroline showed her, yeah. So, okay, those are my finishes. You got a whip? I do, okay. don't you? No, <laughs> I told you this was my... This was my start, my whip, my finish, my MMO. <laughs> this is it, buckaroo. 
I even warned you on the last video because I knew with Christmas I wouldn't get much done. Okay, I had a Christmas Day start. And this is Friends Are Flowers. And it's by Barbara Anna. And it was in the 2023 Spring um, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. And I am doing it on 18 count Rogue Fabric Copper Penny. The color is Copper Penny. So it has like pink, purple, green, um, yeah, yellow. Yeah. It's got a lot of different colors in it. This I got down at Galleria. Oh, okay. No, Welcome oh. Stitchery. Oh. This is Welcome Stitchery. That's my Oh, Christmas that's really good. Start. You can see all the colors, yeah. Here's yeah. Wow. It's got yeah. a lot of colors. It's got some um, General Arts and then some DMCs. Yeah, you can really see the colors when you held that up. So, okay, that was Christmas start. Then I did, this is my blessing sampler. Oh, that, that was I, New Year's start. Yep, started on New Year's. It is Hannah Ann Wallace, 1850. But I got this when we were down the Silver Needle last April, and... I gotta redo a couple things because there's one over one. Oh, and you do Ada. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this. So, I mean, I used to do half stitches and quarter stitches when I stitched on Ada, so you can't just punch through the middle? It's 18 Count Molly by Grace Notes. Um, you, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I did like dimensions kits and stuff. And that I was, was on 14 Count? Well, not all the time. Okay. You don't think you could punch through the middle? No. Or are you gonna On 18 read? count? I don't know. That would be like... Well, 36 count. Yeah, but you're going over two. Yeah, but you can go over one. I mean, you can. Yeah. I don't know. So anyway, I've, I've recharted a couple of the motifs already, but this is, is as far as I got. And that has like some... It's like kind of peach. peachy. Yeah, there's like peach streaks in it. And I, I think you could see it when you held it. Yeah. Up. I think you could. Yeah, you could see the modeling in it. Yep. Yeah. So that. And it's one over one. Oh, on... and this one is your blessing. So you have to finish it by the end of January. Correct. What, you're, what you think you're And having. I'm not going to put Anna, Hannah Ann Wallace in it. I'm going to put one of my relatives. But see, the, the the small letters are one over one. This motif up here was one over one. This one here is one over one. And the words are one over one. Oh, so you're recharting it, moving things down or around? Yep, I got over? that um, Brenda Keys, is it Brenda? Oh, yep. Keys book out. And I'm doing, yeah, recharting that way. Okay. And then one of my whips for... This month is, I'm doing Dancer. Oh, you are. And it's by Barbara Anna. And this was in the 2021 Christmas Winter um, Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine. Yeah, a lot of people have done this one or are working on it. So there. Because yeah. they all like that village up in his antler. <laughs> And I'm doing this on 18 count gray white petty point Ada by Witch Witchell. And so here's Is that the called for no. fabric? Oh, okay. It's what I had. <laughs> it's one eye. One eye is done. Yeah. With... <laughs> Looks like he's got a funky eye. <laughs> hey, I, I finished my requirements for so... I'm teasing you. But it is, you know, once I got that done, I thought, ooh, he's coming to life. Yeah, he is, but you have to be on the other eye. He looks like he has a patch on his eye. Stay tuned yeah, for the yeah. other eye. Yeah, right. <laughs> he just looks, I mean, he looks very beautiful, <laughs> except for his patchy eye. <laughs> if you don't Poor know Jeannie, Jeannie. And I, you know, okay, so I'm thinking... 1823. What the heck does 1823 have to do with Dancer? Okay. Did you look it up? I did. 
that's the first year the story began. Oh, nice. And at that point, it wasn't called The Night Before Christmas. It was There was another name for it, but it's the first time they mentioned reindeer. Oh. So oh. I left it in. <laughs> Since you're talking about that, I, on the way here, I was listening to Flash Phelps on the 60s channel on Sirius. And today is... Um, they're going to stop making Fruit Stripe Gum. If you remember Fruit Stripe Gum oh. as a kid, it's 55 years old. The The little striped horse on the package, his name was Yipes. And they're stopping production of it. So it's been in production for 55 years. So that means it came out when we were 11. Well, I was 11. Years That's ago. when um, it was worth, what, about five, six chews, and then it lost its flavor? That's what they. That's one of the things he talked about is how fast it lost its flavor. But it's... He said that's amazing. It lasted fifty five years, and each stick was a different stripe. Yeah, wasn't it? he said. Yeah, and each stick was a different flavor. Yeah, right. It had either yeah, green stripes. Yeah, he named all or... the flavors. There was a berry and whatever. But I thought that was interesting. That it's. He says so now everybody will probably be buying it up, and you'll see it for a fortune on eBay. <laughs> Those little and not fruits. be able to chew it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fruit stripe gum. <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. So those okay. are my whips. Yep. So we got haul. I got a little bit of haul. Like I say, Christmas gets in the way. There's a Hallmark movie. I was thinking of this this morning. It's called The Magic of Ordinary Day. Oh, The Magic of the Ordinary Day or The Magic Magic of an Ordinary Day. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. I like The Ordinary Day. <laughs> That's me in a nutshell. It's a really good movie. If you can, you know, if you want to watch it, it's called The Magic. It's either The Magic of Ordinary Days or The Magic of an Ordinary Day. Okay. And it's about a lady who's pregnant and back in time. And um, she got pregnant by an officer and the officer, um, he she wrote him letters and stuff and he just kind of dumped her. And so this farmer guy marries her. She goes on a train and he marries her. And they don't know each other. Like a mail order bride? Kind of. And they don't know each other and he runs a farm and stuff. And um, it, it's, it, you know, Hallmark to me doesn't do really good movies anymore. I know you love them. I, it, you could take this, it's, to me. They're it's great stitching movies. It's the same story, just throw in a few different people or put them in Florida or whatever. Anyway, it, in the old days, when Hallmark movies came out, they were really good. Oh, they were tearjerkers. Yes. And this, this movie was pretty good. Yeah, so. I mean, you'd have, they'd be, a, a, it was an event. Right. But that, that's what I like. I like Ordinary Day. Okay, Hall is, um, this is from that needlework on Facebook. You belong to the, um... Homespun? Yeah, Homespun Needleworkers. This was their last, this took quite a while to get. I just, actually just got it, like, last week. Um, Hobby House is the one that's doing it. Um, and you know Hobby House will give you the little bag with everything in it. And then, um... This is the pattern. Now she's, they're talking about the BAP, the big, most people say big awesome project. <laughs> but that's, and you can get it from Hobby House. That's where I ordered it from. And as long as you belong to that group on Facebook, you can order it. Um, and you have your choice of linen? You do. You have a lot of choices, actually. Um, so you can go look. You know, Teresa Colgert's going to do another mystery sale, but... I just seen it quick and I haven't researched it, but it seems like the choices from Fox and Rabbit Rabbit were 36 or 40. So I haven't looked into how an Ada stitcher or someone who does 20 count or 18 count would would do that. But um and then Jeannie and I went to Stitchville on Saturday. Last Saturday, um, I, I wanted to get some thread and what the heck. <laughs> so we went to Stitchville, we went to Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Did we Joanne's. Joanne's. Yeah, that's kind of our normal run. But I found this at Stitchville. I had wanted this for a while and it's by Chessie and me and it's called Harvest Housewife. And I thought it's nice because if you're going to have a sampler, well, it'll be nice to have 
some long ones too, you know, just so you got different. So you can do it shape. as a, a frame thing and yeah. not a roll up. No, thing I'm not or doing it as a, no, I would frame it. Yes, definitely. I'm not doing the frame up stuff um, or the roll up stuff. And then I just saw this. I thought this was pretty cute. I usually don't like a sampler with just a lot of alphabets, but this is little. And I like the shape. I thought, well, it's a different shape thing to put in your, you know, in your, yeah dobo or whatever Your and then on the back that's the front and then this is the back so i thought that was kind of cool too that you put something on the back oh and you stitched a, the back yeah it says lily bates is my name and with my needle i wrote the same so i thought that was cute that it was an octagon is that an octagon yeah. the stop sign yeah okay that's my whip that's my haul that's it that's all i got dude. yeah i didn't Getting anything stitch related for Christmas. And then when I went, um, I did we ever figure out we went to four different places? Did you win the day on Saturday? Um, I won the money day, but I didn't. I mean, you said we had to go by shop. Well, you won Michael's. Whoever spends the most wins. <laughs> I won the most at Stitchville because I bought fabric. I bought, um, oh, yeah. I bought doubloon. She had doubloon. Um, and I bought it in 40, 36, and 32. She had it in mm. all of them, So I bought it. Um, and then I bought thread. Because what I did, which I'll show you, which is actually next. Mm -hmm. um, well, we'll talk about that next. Yeah. And that's what, that's all I got was some, um, uh, vintage country mocha. So and then last Thursday we went thrifting. We went thrifting looking for frames. We aren't going to show you our frames, but we not until we found, get our stitch piece in them. Yeah, we we both found. Okay. Yeah, we went to quite a few thrift stores. Well, we did. Yeah, yeah. and it, it we got we found a few frames. So I was mm -hmm. and a happy. flute. <laughs> yeah, we found a flute. My granddaughter Kelsey plays the flute, and they rent it. Well, we were at the thrift store, and I'm not lying, there was a flute. The thing looks brand new, and it was $37. And so my son looked it up, and they go for between 100 and 1000 So he was going to take it over to the music store and ask him, but it looked, I mean, even the inside of the case, I mean, that thing looked brand new. Mm, it did look nice. Outside oh, of the case, inside, yeah. Everything. I just, I just, I sent him pictures, and I said, do you want me to get it? And he said, yes, get it. So, And they, they spend 30 bucks a month for rent for that flute. So, yeah, it's worth it. I I was shocked. So we had a good haul at the thrift stores. Yeah, so. and cheap, too. <laughs> and some new thrift stores we had never been to before. Yeah, and there were a couple that were really nice, organized. Mm. You know, you don't, usually thrift stores aren't so organized. We even told the lady at the counter, we said, wow. This is really organized. It was nice. It was a fun day. So good. So then we will. We'll move on to plans. Um, so my birthday's coming up next week. Or the week a week next. from today, yep. Yeah, next week. And Jeannie said, well, you're going to have a birthday start. And last year I had started um, Mary Evans. Martha Evans. Martha Evans. Um, it's the one everybody's doing for Brenda for her birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, and I told her, I said, well, I'll probably just pick that up and work on that again. Cause that was my birthday start. And Jeannie says no. <laughs> so we're going to, um, her birthday's in June. So we're going to do two of these, um, one of each. And the first one is Counting is Hard. Both by Luminous Fiber yeah, Arts. Yeah, they're both by Luminous Fiber Arts. And we've, we both bought these. We get them at Welcome Stitchery, or where did we get them? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, um, counting is hard, and then um, the other one is called Friendship Series Stitching Birds. And they so, kind of look like they could be companions. Yeah, they could be. And so I'm going to start this one for my birthday. This is, And it has a tomato and stuff, so it's good for my sewing room. Because that's what I was kind of thinking. I said, okay, I did a winter thing. I kind of would like to go back to doing some stuff for my sewing room. So that's where the doubloon comes in. I got um, 36 count doubloon. And I mean, I, I think all of you have seen doubloon. And that's what it, it calls for. Um, she used um, 
Misty Purcell used her linen called 32 count sparrow linen, but she doesn't make it anymore. So then she said you could use picture this plus doubloon or Zweigart vintage country mocha. And that's what I got. Right. So she, 20 count. And I got the doubloon. And it calls for 32 and I went down to 36. And I, I did buy 40, but I thought 40 it would be pretty small. Yes. And both of them call for the same thing. So what I did, um, I had a ring full of all the DMC because it calls for stitching birds, calls for all... DMC except for three weeks dye works. There's Liberty, Capri, and Ocean, but everything else is DMC. So what I did is I put it on a ring and I brought it with me, and then I converted it all to hand dyed threads. I mean, here's the here's the Capri that it calls for. I didn't keep the red that it called for. <laughs> it was too bright. <laughs> so I I had to dull it down, and the white was really white, <laughs> I had to dull it down. Okay, here's Liberty. Yeah, there's... And what did you dull it down to? I dulled it down to uh, current. <laughs> and look at my white, is shabby sheep. <laughs> oh, do you have oh, the white? That's in the other one. Oh. <laughs> the white is really white. I mean, to me, it's like it's going to glow in the dark. <laughs> Well, it's I got I got the B fifty two blank. Oh, yeah. See, I I, <laughs> I dulled mine down. Well, and um, then this one calls for the three forty seven. Yeah, that goes with your other red. Look at the peach. Look at that. <laughs> Did you even get this? Yeah, it's this. <laughs> Stay tuned for when we compare these. <laughs> yeah. Mine um. will be sunshine <laughs> or sunrise and hers will be sunset. Set. Hey, who stays up till midnight? Me. I like sunset. But see, like Capri and Ocean, these are the two that actually go for the bird. So, um, but everything else, I and I matched really good. I felt like I matched pretty darn close except for the reds. I mean, the reds I knew I wanted darker. But I did match the two reds so that they went together, you know, because I made them darker. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see how, how we do. But it, they'll look different. <laughs> so, we're starting a, the Friendship st Series Stitching Birds for Leanne's birthday on the 18th. <laughs> we are. Um, January. <laughs> and then for Jeannie, we'll do the counting. We'll switch and do counting is hard. And I'm going to make my name do a pin keep, so I'm making it smaller. I'm not putting it in a frame. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I get a good laugh. That's why we're different. That's good to be different. <laughs> it gives me a good laugh. And then there was a comment last time from Joyce wanting to know if I was going to do 12 by 12 or 24 in 2024. And no, I didn't. Uh, we entertain on Christmas or New Year's Eve, so I didn't have any opportunity to do that. Um, and I'm doing Whipco. And um, like when we went to Stitchville on Saturday, I was really good. I'll, I would pick one up, a chart up and think, oh, this is really cool. Then I'm thinking of that dozens I have at home in the kits and stuff. So starting out a little bit frugal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause when I put rearranged all of my whips, not whips, um, kitted into bags, you know, you see how much stuff you have and you want to stitch them all. Well, so. and then too, I did my numbers for 2023 and <clears throat> I had 114 starts. New starts. I finished 105. Wow, that's really good. And I fully finished 91. And they're anywhere from ornaments, pin keeps up to some samplers. So I felt okay about that. I'm not, you know, carrying over a thousand whips. No, no, no. You're hardly carrying over any. So, so. I haven't, as far as doing a whip parade or anything like that, um, that is a little more organization. Maybe we'll do it mid-year. <laughs> and I noticed, was it the two tall stitchers? Did they do a finish parade? And oh, I, for the year? Yeah. Oh. But they finished in 2023. So um, I will not personally be doing that with the 100 plus. 
But anyway, yeah. So that was just my, so I'm making progress in what I have. You are, because that's, that's, if you take 114 minus 105, you don't have many. Nine. Yeah, you have nine, but you have more than nine whips, so they must be from before 2023. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, last year I had 94 starts and 95 finishes. So, oh, so you were ahead yeah. of your whips and, and 83 fully finishes. Yeah, and I don't know what my start was. I started back to cross-stitching in 2021, and I don't know how many starts I had. I had 72 finishes. Yeah, because I, um, she, we were talking about that at lunch because I, I put us even a year further back and we weren't. Because like she said, we weren't stitching in COVID. I wasn't, no. No. Not and I had started just a couple months before her back. And I was the one that told her, you know, I found um, floss tube and I was telling her about floss tube. So then she started watching Floss too, but I was only a couple months ahead of her. So I must have, she thought she started in January of 2021. So I must have started in like November of 2020. I wish I would have started earlier because by the time I started, we were oh. packing and moving. Oh yeah. And we were in COVID. I mean, everybody yeah. kept talking about, well, you have your stash. Well, we didn't have a stash. Well, I had... A lot of, I used to get one of the cross-stitch magazines. I don't know, for love of cross-stitch or whatever. And I had them all in, you know, in bins and stuff in my, <coughs> excuse me, sewing room. Well, I hadn't cross-stitched for years. And so when I was packing up to move, I donated them all. Yeah, I know. Isn't that sad? Because you could have had all of those patterns in those books. Yeah. It's just like our friend Karen. I mean, she's she died a few years ago, but five years ago and um she got rid of all of her crochet stuff and we we were all crocheting <laughs> so she had to go and get more <laughs> so well, they teaches you something <laughs> yeah don't clean yeah don't don't give anything away because you could decide to do it again <laughs> yep um okay uh i we're gonna i have i made some bags over christmas um, I made Jeannie one because I was buying fabric and I found this fabric. And even when I went up to get a cut, the lady goes, what are you going to do with the flamingo fabric? And I was laughing and I said, oh, my friend loves flamingo, so I have to make her a bag. So I did. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. it's got a... It has a snowflake and a little uh, red, like a light bulb thing yeah. for the Christmas tree on it. So that one is fun. Um, I didn't, I only had one like winter bag. I, 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 I don't know why I had a lot of Christmas bags, but like only one I could call winter. And so I made this one with the fabric cause we have quite a bit of fabric. So this is my, this is a, it can be Christmas too. Cause it has a wreath. Um, what is your snow day stitching? My snow day stitching is Mrs. Santa holding a sampler. She's a but where are you keeping it? It's in a, Christmas. Okay. Because she's Christmas to me, Santa. Mm -hmm. So she's in a Christmas one. Um, but like that, this, my Quaker winter, I I didn't have a bag to put it in. So. You know, and that's something you don't find on vintage linens is seasonal stuff much other than like Christmas or Halloween. Oh, right. On, on, you know, the right. fine snowflakes or anything. Yeah. You're so, right, right. or snowmen. Um, so this is the bag I made. Um, and I put just a little charm. There's a snowflake, and then there's a snowman on it. It says joy. And then this is weird. It's a Halloween <laughs> one. And it's, I mean, I, not a Halloween one. It's a snowman. But the colors the lady stitched it, there, it's, there wasn't any red or green or even blue or anything on it. It has a or he has an orange scarf. He's got gold stars. The it's tree has a, has a green tree and his hat is black and then there's some darker red little like berries or lights i don't know what they are berries i, I guess they were berries because mm -hmm. they're in his hat too and then the snowflakes are gray so i had to find some fabric that kind of pulled those colors out and was that on a towel yes okay we go to a unique boutique it's called unique boutique and it's a bunch of different it's like cambridge and um, it's in her area here. And the, you go, some are on, like, a couple are on a farm. It's a little like pop-up stores. Yeah, and you go in and, like, one lady, you're in a silo, and then you're kind of in her, 
not a barn really. I don't know what it is. It's a metal shed. Other people, you're kind of in the, you can be in their house or they have a little shed that you're in. Um, these people had, they're close to you and we couldn't go to them. They don't, they aren't even advertising anymore because you said the road was mm. closed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Down five. Okay. Yeah. And she made a bunch of towels and I picked up a couple of her dish towels and this That's was cute. one of them. Yeah. It was cute. It was really cute. Um, and this is snowman again. He's holding a present and a wreath. So it could, you know, I could... But I just put some different size snowflake things on. And he's, I don't know, he's a vintage snowman. Mm -hmm. So I put him on. Um, and then this was a spring one because I'm, um, I want to do some spring ornaments for my tree. And I had this pillowcase. It's cute. So I put it on. Actually, it's the same red fabric I bought for Jeannie's flamingos. <laughs> so, um... I found a little bird nest charm, and then Jeannie found the little red cardinal bird charm when we were at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or somewhere. Yeah. So this one I really like. This is cute. It is cute. Yeah. And um, I'm doing Jeanette Douglas's. It's called Chubby Bird, and it's in a mm. it's in a little tart pan to hang on my tree. So I'll put Chubby Bird in that. So those are my bags that I made. Okay, um, okay, so we're pretty much done with cross stitch now. Um, we're gonna move on to turtle tidbits. There's a little bit of embroidery and quilt. So for those of you that don't wanna watch that, happy new year and happy stitching, and we'll see you in a month. And yes, thanks for all your comments. Yeah. And um, all your subscribers, yes. we're getting closer. <laughs> one number up again <laughs> to the 2000 mark so it's getting exciting and we thought we'd do a couple giveaways when we hit 2000 we're kind of like turtles yeah slow and steady <laughs> that's what we are <laughs> speaking of turtles yes we um had a question from <laughs> teresa um she wanted to know i talked last time about you know those baby turtles i found in my basement and um she wanted to know i have that contraption where they come out and lay the eggs and she wanted to know do they come out at any other time and the answer is absolutely yes turtles um semi-aquatic turtles not tortoises but semi-aquatic turtles they have to come out of the water they come out several times a day and the three main reasons they come out of the water is A, to get warm. Um, reptiles are cold-blooded animals. They're not like us. We can't gener we generate, we can generate our own heat. Turtles can't. They, ha they have to rely on the environment to get warm. So they come out and they will bask all day or not, you know, they'll kind of go in and out of the water all day to regulate their temperature. They'll get out and let the sun warm them up. And then when they get too hot, they go back in the water to cool down. But basking does three things. A, it warms them up. B, the UVB and the UVA from the sun, when they eat, that sun, UVB and UVA, translates their food or turns their food into the vitamins and stuff that they need to stay healthy. And one of the biggest vitamins, of course, you all know is vitamin D. And vitamin D um, helps the calcium, turns the calcium in for their body so they can keep their shells hard and their skin healthy and um, everything they need to stay healthy. And then the other, I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget. <coughs> Um, they have to dry off. Their shell has to dry off several times a day because otherwise they'll get shell rot. Their shell will actually start to rot because they're in water constantly. And their shell is a hard, um, it's their, it's their, it, it has their spine in, it has everything in, and it's their protection. So they really need it hard. And two of the two things I get for sick turtles that when people bring them to me, is they either have shell rot or they have a respiratory infection because they got too cold. So the shell rot, they didn't provide them a basking spot with UVB, UVA rays to um, keep them healthy. They, they absolutely positively, I mean, we need a certain amount of sun, what is it, 15, 20 minutes a day of pure sun? Yeah, yeah, to get the amount of vitamin D we need. They need a lot more. 
the sun is really important to them. Um, and she said she didn't see that. Well, when you're sitting in, we're sitting in front of my tank, you can't see, but I have two basking spots on my tank. And here's a picture I tried to, I think you can see them. Those are the two basking spots. And I think because we're at the level that we're at with the camera and stuff, they're right at that level, mm -hmm. so you can't see them, but they're basking. And here's a close-up picture um, of them basking. And this is Gracie, and that's Albert behind her. That's her mate. And then this is one of the albinos. Um, I think it's Bubbles. That's Bubbles, the female. So then in the winter when they go into brumation or... Right. Gracie does not leave. Gracie sits there. She does not okay. leave. You'll see her maybe twice a week. She'll plop in the water and get a drink. And then she comes right back out and she sits there all winter. Even when the light goes off at night when I go to bed, I always check on her. She's up there. That's where she stays. She doesn't... She need, I think she needs that cool off at night. That's part of her brumation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, our house can, we have it set to go down to 64 at night. So like now when it's cold, because today I think the high is only, when I drove here, it was 14. So the high isn't, a Sunday our high is going to be zero. So our house will probably go down to, I would guess, maybe 66. I know our house stays pretty insulated. So she will sit up there in pitch black and that's where she'll stay. Albert will go in the water and sleep and so will Bubbles. Gracie is the only one that she stays there all winter long. She does, like I said, she rarely leaves. But in the wild. She would be they, down in the muck, frozen, yeah. down in the muck. And they move still. Even when they're in hibernation, they kind of move really slow around and if something disturbs them you know they'll kind of move around because i have hibernated the one turtle scooby it was a red-eared slider i got in 40 degree water that she brought it to me in a bucket and i had to hibernate her all winter so that was fascinating to me to watch but that turtle even though it was in 38 to 40 degree water it still kind of moved mm. you know it just sort of moved around every time i opened the cover to look at her she was in a different position. Yeah. yeah. So they do they do move around. And you'll see if you look on turtle videos, they'll they'll be knocking on the ice of their pond and that turtle will be under there and you can see them. And some of them like the Blandings turtles. Um I can't think of the other ones right now. They actually mate during the winter. They will mate in freezing cold ice cold water. I'm sure they're doing it slow, but they're doing, they have, there's videos. It's kind of, see, to me as a turtle person, stuff like that is fascinating because you don't normally know what these <clears throat> things do in the winter. So to be able to see their action in the, in the winter under the ice and stuff is kind of funny. And here's the three babies basking. And see, most of the time, that's what they do is they, they'll eat. And then after they eat, they go up on the basking spot under the UVB, UVA, and that, that UVB and UVA helps turn their food into what they need to stay healthy. So it's... Their afternoon nap. Right. And they're, they are really, they're required, they're, they're looking, the environment is what they need to stay healthy. We don't need that, so to speak, like they do. And that's my turtle tidbit. So there you go, Teresa. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. Yes, they do come out of the water yes, other times. Yes, they do, and for, for very specific reasons, and they do. Um, so now I have some embroidery. Um, if any of you embroider, there's a person out there called Kathy Schmitz, S-C-H-M-I-T-Z, and I'll put a link to her in our description when I you know, upload our video. She has a lot of patterns out for embroidery, um, I don't know. I've known about her for years and years. She used to do smalls. She still does. Yeah. Because I bought her book. She has a book out called Tiny Treasures, and they're all little embroideries. Cause Didn't I she have a stitch along a few years ago on Facebook or something, I, too? I think she did. I think she does a stitch along once in a while. Well, this year she's doing a stitch along, and it's an embroidery one. And it's she had the fabric printed, and it's, by, it's from Spoonflower. You go... Um, if you go to Kathy Schmitz on YouTube, she has two YouTubes out right now. One is about how to get the fabric, and the second one is her first. She's doing a monthly stitch along, and her she she's got the first video up for the first block. And she calls this some, some kind of braids or something. Yes. But this is the fabric, 
And it's all printed I already. January done. Yeah. This is all printed already. When you buy the fabric, it's a quarter yard of fabric from Spoonflower. And there's three colors. You can get them in red or green or blue, whatever you like. And she tells you what, what thread she's using. But January, she already has the YouTube. So January, I stitched the snowman already. He's all done. Um, and she's going to do one a month for each block. Is the um, video listed on here on the instructions? Um, YouTube video. Stitch along with Kathy Schmitz. Um, she calls it To the Point by Kathy Schmitz. But if you just type in YouTube, Kathy with a K and then S-C-H-M-I-T-Z, they'll pop right up. Oh, yeah, because here it's the copyright on Right, <clears throat> yeah. And you can also go to kathyschmitz.com. Um, yeah, to the point with Kathy Schmitz. It's called Woven Wreaths. It's funny, she's got wreathers, but it's wreaths. It's called Woven Wreaths. Um, like I say, there's there's red, there's green, and there's blue. And then you can order a quarter yard of... A fat quarter? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, a fat quarter of the coordinating fabric. And this fabric is in here. It's it's these woven blocks right here for your... Um, for your binding and then Jeannie ordered another quarter a fat quarter so she can put this on the back and Jeannie ordered it in green she <coughs> hasn't gotten it yet but well, it's coming it's being shipped yeah it's it's pretty fast to get it's it's kind of fun because even in the first video she shows you four different stitches to you she actually demonstrates how to do the and I know um it's a stem stitch it's the fly stitch it's a, a back stitch can't remember what the other one was. So you don't stitch everything. You just highlight things. No, you, you stitch whatever. Everything's printed? Pr yeah, whatever's been printed in the circle, you stitch. Okay, but now, like, when you come down to do the B, you won't fill in the dark. I yes, you will. Oh. You'll, you'll <clears throat> stitch everything. I okay. Think I'm, don't quote me, but I think wherever you see dark, she's going to show you how to satin stitch. Got it. So like the next one for Valentine's, you see the dark leaves. I'm sure she's going to show you how to stem stitch, or not stem stitch, um, satin, satin stitch. <clears throat> that would be my guess, is wherever there's dark, you're going to fill it in. And do you stitch with one thread? You stitch with one thread. Um, for mine, it's a blue variegated. It's 078, um, and it's size 12 pearl cotton, and she tells you all that. What, what color you need. And she also will show you DMC colors you can use. So you can pick since DMC isn't variegated, you know. She gives you kind of a, mm, there must be five or six numbers that you can pick from. So like if you want to stitch with the darker color oh. or if you want to stitch with the lighter color or whatever. So it's kind of neat. I'm, I'm having a good time with it. it. It wasn't, it didn't take, it didn't even take me a whole night to stitch that. It, it, it doesn't take very long. And then you do one a month and when you're done, you got this, I don't know if I hold it back. I mean, that's as big as the quilt will be. That's it. It's going to be hard waiting each month. Yeah. So I like I was talking to Jeannie. I said, I think you could kind of tell what, what can be stem stitched. And then you could probably kind of wait and see what she does for the other stitch. Now, does she <clears throat> show it? Does she stitch with batting behind her fabric? No. Okay. And she doesn't stitch with a hoop, but she says if you stitch with a hoop, you can you know, go ahead and use a hoop. And I stitch with a hoop. And she's left-handed, so she's stitching left-handed when she shows you. But it's the same. I mean, it's there's... like mirror image, right? isn't it? Yeah, there's no difference. I didn't have a problem following her because she was left-handed. Um, and, I mean, that's what she does for a living is she's embroidered, so she's really good. But she shows you how to... You know, she has four stitches, this first one, that she shows you how to do. So it's kind of fun. It's just something a little different, and it's fun. So give her a look up and see if you are interested. I just thought I'd let you know about that. Okay, that's embroidery. So now we'll move on to quilts. And I have nothing, so Jeannie's up. I just have um, back on the design wall is um, another quilt from our kitchen. And it's, it was a, uh, oh, I can't think of it. Eleanor Burns. No. No quilt in the day? Was it? Oh, no, no, that was that one we were um, talking about. Sorry. Oh, from, it was a little card, monthly card. Oh, Temecula. Temecula, okay. yeah. And on the pattern, it called for you, you cut your blocks one and a quarter inches. Well, 
these are cut two and a half because I want I'm making this quilt for the family room. So this is where the pattern ends because the pattern was for like a 16 by 16. So I don't know about putting an inner border there and then a bigger border or an inner border and more blocks. I haven't decided if I'm going to be done with it and go on to the next one or if I want to add on. So it's kind of a whip. It's kind of a finish. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. It's an unknown. It is. It is. So that's, that's what I've been working on over the last month. And then um, when we talk about club, it's up in Rush City, Minnesota at the quilt shop. And I think I've been going to it for over 20 years. And so they offer, I think there's two quilts this year. There's a Kim Deal, and then there's another one that's like king size, something rose. Vintage rose. Vintage rose. And then she offered another one too. But there was only a couple of people that signed up for that, so they canceled. Right. Oh, okay. And then they do what they call a mystery. So, I mean, it's a gamble, but I'm doing the mystery this year. And so for our first month, we got this um, quilt builder card deck, set number two. There's 40 in here to make 40 blocks. And it gives you the cutting instructions and piecing instructions for a six inch, eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, and 36 inch. So I don't know, unless that's for a barn quilt or something. Right. But so this year or this month, we're doing Road to Oklahoma and we gotta make four of these blocks, six inch blocks for a small wall hanging. And this is, they gave you three different choices of packs of fabric. So this was, was my choice. So, I'll be working on that now in the next couple weeks to get that done. Um, so, I think that's about it for quilting for me. Okay, do you have plans for quilting? Yes. I don't know if you remember, about a year ago, I had a red and white one on the oh, board. Yep. And shortly after that video, it got packed away, never to see the light of day again. So I got that out. So I'm thinking I want to finish it. Or yeah, well, it. and I'm making it into a queen or a king. So it's, yeah, um, that and then last month, and yet last year's club was the Kim Deal Spools. Yep. Scraps yep. of Scraps kindness. of kindness. Yeah. And I've got that one over half done. So I'd like to get that finished. So that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm still quilting on my ring quilt. And then, um, I, I'm, God, I got to be pretty close to being done. Um, and then I, I really have the hankering to do another applique quilt. So I was kind of looking at all my applique stuff. And then I really want to work on a wool quilt. So those are my two. What about your bench quilts? You need one. For your bench outside your front door. I do. I need um, January. I need a winter one. And I have one. I bought a panel that has blue jays on it. And there's red berries and stuff. And then I bought some patterns from. It's called Villa Rosa. And um, they. Sh she has a lot of patterns where you just add borders to panels and stuff. So I bought four patterns. So I'm trying to pick one of those to make it into a bench quilt for out on my bench on my front porch. So yeah. I have plenty to do. I would like, I, it seems like piecing is, it used to be what I did all the time and now it seems to have taken a back road. So I'd like to, or back whatever, but I wanna. But your quilting machine or your quilting machine time is pretty well booked. I mean, you're, you're backed up with. <clears throat> yeah, I got three other I think I have three other king size quilts to quilt. Well, and then you got your Teresa Colgert that you just finished. Yep, Kringle, and there's there's probably six or seven quilts waiting to be quilted, and they're all sandwiched, ready to go. And then I have several. I was cleaning my quilting room closet the other day, and I have several that I have the backs and the tops for, and they aren't sandwiched yet. And there there must be six or eight, and they're just waiting. And then there. There might be t-shirt quilts in our future. Might be. <laughs> might be. I have I have several different. I have my oldest son's 
And then I have my daughter-in-laws and my granddaughters, all these bins of t-shirts. And I asked um, my, my brother's wife, Linda, um, years ago, I asked her for her oldest son, Joe's t-shirts when he was done with them. And I've had them in a bag for years, totally forgot about them. And he's getting married on May 19th. So I asked Jeannie if I pulled out these t-shirts, if she'd help me make a t-shirt, just a lap quilt for him, just something for him to remember, you know, his school days. And I thought he would really appreciate that. So, um, She's going to kind of point me in the right direction on right. how to do this. So, And I thought as long as I'm teaching her, I could do a quilt along too. Sure, that would be so. good. So we'll see how that goes. Because my problem is I understand you you cut the t-shirts and you make them into a block, but they're all different sizes, and that's where my brain kind of goes, okay, I don't know what to do, do here. Whereas she's really good at, she can make up a pattern from nothing. So she's really good at saying, okay, these blocks will line up the blocks, and then she can figure out the spacers between. She's really good at that, and she's made it's several. Like a puzzle, so, yeah. yeah. And I'm my brain just shuts down. It's like, okay, I don't know what to do here. Or I would make them all the same size so they would fit. <laughs> and well, t-shirts don't always work that way because of what's on them. So right, you don't always want that. Right, right. No, that isn't it. I last one I made was for my. My nephew. Now I won't find it. But anyway. Yeah, she showed me several she's made. I've never made a t-shirt quilt. Not ever, so. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't have any desire. And then, I don't know, when I found his bag of t-shirts. I can't remember, but I, ha I know where it is. I exactly know where it is. But it moved with us from the lake and everything. Because Linda gave those to me years ago, so... I just thought it'd be a nice surprise as, you know, part of his wedding present that he can... Oh, yeah, there it is. That's cute. This is the one I made for my youngest nephew when he graduated. So, yeah. We'll see. That'll, that will that will have to take precedence because I have to have it done by May <clears> 19th, <throat> so... Yeah. So, well, I can fit stuff in between, but that'll yeah. have to be my priority until then anyway, so... Um, hopefully it won't take too long because if she figures out the measurements for me, I think it's just putting it together and it quilting it doesn't take too much, does it? I mean, because you don't do you quilt through the t-shirt? I kind of would get some and oh. echo and okay. but then the background then just you know kind of a meander Dirt, or loop sure. meander or something you know in tone on tone so you don't see it. You just have right. the texture, right? Because then I thought you know if he's going to be wrapping it around when he's laying on the couch or whatever so mm -hmm. and i guess i have seen some where they mix sweatshirts with t-shirts oh and that i've seen some where they put three-dimensional stuff on yeah them too. like they leave the the, the zippers or the yeah, ties yeah, or yeah. yeah i don't think i i mean i i haven't been through the bag in years but i think they're all just plain old t-shirts my husband's waiting for me to do another one because then I cut up the, the what's left of the t-shirt into like three or four inch squares and then he uses that for his woodworking. <laughs> and he's getting down on this box of squares is almost empty. So. Well, yeah, and I told her, she said just first of all cut up, she cuts up the seam and then by the arm and just gets rid of the rest of the back of the t-shirt and everything. And so I could do that. And I said, well, I can bring you a whole bunch of t-shirts. <laughs> then, that, you know, to start it, that's what I can do, so... Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not, you know, sometimes the, like if you have something like this, I mean, you can make a four patch out of that for a block. Right. Or you can put it in, you know, like a um, cornerstone or something too. That's true. And then like here you got it down the sleeve. So, I mean, you save everything and use what you need. Yep. So, yep. Okay, gang, I think that's it for us and we'll be back in a month. Um, yep. Uh, you know, we have a birthday girl this month, so we're going to do a little, just a little trip on your birthday. Yeah, just that we're going to go to Buttermilk Basin and lunch. And then Julie hasn't done her birthday trip yet, so in February, we're going to do a two-nighter birthday trip for both of us. But we'll be filming before that, right? I thought you said we were. I think we should. Well. If it's four weeks. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if it's. 
Okay. Yeah, we should film before that. Right. So we'll talk more about that when we do our next video. Yeah. Because we won't have gone yet. So, so I, yeah, because they just said, what do you want to do on your birthday? And I didn't really know. And then I thought, well, I like Buttermilk Basin, and so do they. So then we can go for pizza afterwards. And that's a short day trip. Very yeah. short. Yeah, it's... it's 45 minutes away or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe an hour tops maybe for you, but no, I, no? it's right down 65 okay, for me. Yeah. So, so then, um, that's what we're doing for my birthday. So that'll be fun. And the birthday start. Yes. And the birthday start. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. So we'll do that. <laughs> okay, gang. I think that's it for us and, um, happy stitching and we'll see you in a month. Bye. Bye.